Right. Thanks for the invitation. I'm thrilled to be here today. In the previous presentation, uh, we all learned about sea level rise. That was a great overview. And in this presentation, I'll talk about nuisance flooding, which is closely related to sea level rise. And what I present is part of an interdisciplinary project funded by the National Science Foundation. Many individuals are involved from different fields. They look into this issue from different perspectives, including engineering science and social science. Um, let me start with a quick definition. What is nuisance flooding? It's a relatively new term. Nuisance flooding refers to typically minor and non-destructive flood events in coastal areas dominated by seawater. And I can explain it here with this uh, simple schematic. When water level exceeds your local elevation, the local elevation over there, when water level exceeds that elevation, you get flooded right in your coastal area. And this can be caused by high tide or a storm surge um, or a combination of both. This is what we call it nuisance flooding. Again, we don't talk about major floods like um, Katrina type floods in this case. Um, these are typically minor and non-destructive, but often very frequent. They happen um, very frequently. Now, what is the connection to sea level rise? Um, in the top panel, imagine if your sea levels are lower, uh, let's say 50 years ago, 60 years ago, sea levels were lower in many places, most places, and you needed a major storm, a big surge, um, or a combination of surge and high tide to exceed that sort of local threshold for um, nuisance flooding. Now, sea levels are higher. Now, there is less freeboard left. It means you don't necessarily need a major storm and a major surge to get coastal flooding. Even high tide can cause local flooding, right? So this is the connection to, uh, to sea level rise. And you can imagine as sea level rise um, continues, we will have more and more of this uh, nuisance flooding. Now, these are minor um, floods, and I mentioned non-destructive typically, but they have serious impacts. They have serious socioeconomic impacts. They cause uh, business interruptions, road closures, and all kinds of other problems. Um, even they pose public health impacts. Imagine when you get flooded, you know, sewer systems can get affected um, and all kinds of pollutions and um, pollutants can get into the streets and people can get exposed to all kinds of um, hazards and public health risks um, are, are um, really a big concern. And these um, non-destructive events, if they become very frequent, they eventually turn into destructive events. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, nuisance flooding is closely related to sea level rise, and here is some data. Let's start with Boston. The top um, panel shows sea level rise, and you have seen figures like this. It, it has been going up pretty linearly. And the, the one at the bottom shows nuisance flooding over time. We start from nothing up to around 1950 or 60, to more and more sea, um, nuisance flooding in the past um, decades. As you can see, um, they are kind of um, correlated and follow the same sort of path. Um, we have uh, looked into climate projections, including sea level rise, basically projections, um, with business as usual and um, moderate um, climate change. And those are the envelopes you see, the upper bound and lower bounds. And um, we have developed a simple model that basically projects nuisance flooding into the future in response to sea level rise. So basically, the envelope at the top shows projected sea level rise, and the envelope at the bottom shows projected increase in <coughs> nuisance flooding under um, business as usual and a moderate um, emission scenario. And this is pretty much the same in different places. Um, Charleston, South Carolina, again, the same pattern. Um, linear increase in sea level rise and um, also a substantial increase in um, nuisance flooding and other places as well. We have done this for um, um, most uh, major coastal cities around the country and you see the same pattern. In many places, just looking at historical data and not looking into future, just looking at historical data, nuisance flooding has increased by 
close to 300%. And this is what has already happened. So, you know, we know about it and there's not a lot of uncertainty in it. <coughs> and of course, we expect this to increase in the future. Now, um, this is again, um, let me go back to this slide. This is closely associated with sea level rise. And as this level, sea levels um, rise, basically, we'll have more and more of these events. Um, this um, graphic summarizes what I just mentioned. You see the statistics for different cities around the country, west coast and east coast. And um, the legend shows nuisance flooding percent change in nuisance flooding and the corresponding percent change in sea level rise. So this means that, for example, where you see dark red, like Charleston, um, La Jolla, and some other places, um, for example, 90% change in sea level rise will lead to around an 89% change in um, nuisance flooding. Or in some other places, 60% change in sea level rise corresponds to 10% change in nuisance flooding. And this depends on many factors, including local elevations. In some places, there are protections, like there are sea walls that basically provide some protection. Some places, you don't have those. So, there are many factors here, so the effects are not exactly the same everywhere, uh, as you can see with the color bar. Um, and uh, and what, I sh what I mentioned was just the average expected change. Remember that, for example, for the sea level rise, projections are, you know, for example, uh, for dark red, is between 15% um, to more than 200%. And the corresponding change in nuisance flooding ranges from 51% to around 270%. So the average is around 90, but it could be a lot worse. Now, um, this graphic puts um, the previous one into perspective. You, you see relative comparison. We, we, we said, okay, let's assume that we have a uniform sea level rise everywhere. So 30 millimeters, um, 60, um, 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 60 millimeters and 150 millimeters. So uniform change in sea level. What is the impact in nuisance flooding? And for three millimeter, let's say green dots, six millimeter, uh, six centimeter um, yellow ones and uh, purple ones correspond to 15 centimeter or 150 millimeters. Um, based on literature, we expect you know, an average three millimeter um, sort of, um, per decade. So these correspond to, you know, roughly 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. Now what, shows, what this graph shows, uh, on the y-axis you see change in um, nuisance flooding. And as you can see, um, changes again, the range of expected changes are very significant. And um, also it shows that different places, we have different um, sort of vulnerability to a nuisance flooding. For example, San Francisco um, shows more change relative to past compared to other places, compared to, for example, Washington, DC. But basically everywhere we see substantial increase um, in the past and the same we expect in the future. This is um, part of a study that um, published just a couple of days ago in Geophysical Research Letters and uh, it's available online. Um, the key conclusion is that um, on average an 80% or so change in sea level rise um, leads to an average 55% change in nuisance flooding. And this is again aggregate, averaging everything on average. And again, 80% change in sea level rise, we know that with high confidence that most probably it will happen. Um, sometime in this century. Um, and um, um, again, the, the issue is that, um, yes, these, so we expect more, more and more of these nuisance floodings, but what are the impacts? As Ben mentioned in the previous presentation, what are the, the consequences? These events have cascading effects, and uh, again, public health, we don't really even know what are the consequences from public health perspective? And again, we have aging infrastructure, right? Um, and if you expose them to all these sort of, these are relatively frequent events. If you expose them to more and more of these frequent events, it means that you put more and more stress 
and your system uh, could eventually lead to um, event destructions. Um, with that, um, I stop here and I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you.